Okay guys, I'm going to talk about vertical and horizontal stretches and compressions. Let's start with a function. y is equal to f of x. f of x could be just about any function. f of x could equal a parabola, or x squared. Or f of x could equal the absolute value function. It doesn't really matter. All vertical and horizontal stretches and compressions will have the same impact on any given function. So let's say we start with a function. y is equal to f of x. And let's just say our function looks like a vertical line. And it's one unit long. Okay. And then we take that vertical line that's one unit long, and let's say we stretch it. And so now it's two units long. Okay, so we took our initial function, y is equal to f of x, and we stretched it by a factor of 2. So this would be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. One way we could write that is y is equal to twice our original function. y is equal to 2 f of x. Vertical stretch. Let's say we start initially with a function y is equal to f of x. And it's a vertical line that's 2 inches or 2 centimeters or 2 units long. We make a transformation. We take that vertical line, which is 2 units long, and let's say we compress it. It's now one units long. Okay, so that represents a vertical compression. So vertical compression. By a factor of one half. So we can write our function. Y is equal to one half f of x. Now let's look at horizontal stretches and compressions, which can be just a little more difficult to understand. Again, we'll start with the function y is equal to f of x. And let's say our, our initial function, or our pre-image, looks like this. Let's say we run some distance and it takes us two seconds. Okay, what we'll now do is let's say we run the same distance but rather than running it in two seconds, it will take us four seconds. We got a little slower. Looking at those two lines, it's easy to see that we have a horizontal stretch going on. Okay. That line has been stretched by a factor of two. So this would represent a horizontal, a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. The first time we ran that length, it took us 2 seconds. The second time we ran, it took us 4 seconds. So we got slower. Or that is, our speed was one half of what it was when we ran the first time. Our speed was one half of what it was when we ran it the first time. Or two over four is equal to one half. We got slower. It took us longer to run the race. We would write this function as y is equal to f of one half x. We were slower. Our speed was one half of what it was the first time we ran the race, or y is equal to f of x over 2. Okay, notice that we have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2, but within the parentheses we write the reciprocal of 2 over 1 or 1 half, which is just x over 2. 
That represents a horizontal stretch. Let's say we have a function. Y is equal to f of x. And let's say we run a race or some distance and it takes us four seconds. Okay. That was our pre-image. Now, let's say we run the same race or some distance it only takes us half as long. Two seconds. Okay. So it's easy to see that we have a horizontal we have a horizontal compression or shrink. We have a horizontal compression by a factor of one half or two over four is equal to one half. So we have a horizontal compression by a factor of one half. Okay. We would write that in function notation this, this way. Notice that um, when we ran the race the first time, it took us four seconds. We ran it again the next time, it took us two seconds. So we got we ran twice as fast. So our function notation would be this. It would be y is equal to f of 2x. Okay, again, notice that our compression factor was 1 half. In function notation, we'll take the reciprocal of 1 half, or 2 over 1, and we'll write 2x. Okay, so just keep that in mind regarding horizontal stretches and compressions. Okay, the factors and what goes inside the parentheses in function notation are always reciprocals.